Hello students! In this video we're going to talk about protists and fungi. Um, let's get started. So these are protists. Um, they're some mysterious little creatures, but you're going to hear some names that you're quite familiar with. Let's get started. What are protists? These are autotrophic or heterotrophic eukaryotes that, are, that is not a plant or animal or a fungi. Um, so basically, We've, we've done a good job identifying plants, right? You look outside and you see plants and you're pretty, you're pretty confident about what plants are. You're pretty confident about what animals are too. Fungi, not so much, and you hear protists and you think, what are those? <laughs> those are things that don't belong in any of the other categories, so right now we just group them all and call them protists. So they can be autotrophic or heterotrophic, meaning some of them can produce their own food and release oxygen, go through photosynthesis and, and things like that. Um, some, some of them have to obtain food from the environment. But they're all eukaryotes. They all belong to the kingdom. Well, not the kingdom. I'm sorry. Protus is a kingdom. They all belong to um, the domain eukaryote. Okay? So they're not, they're not prokaryotes. They're not bacteria or archaea. Now, some protists are more similar to plants, some are more similar to animals. We're going to see a cladogram uh, in a little bit, and you're going to see that protists are all over the place. Most protists are unicellular, just something to remember. Okay, here's some examples. Here's one. These are gigantic protists, one called the brown algae, called kelp. Okay, so the picture that you see right here, these are kelp. And there are also other examples, such as amoeba or paramecium. You're going to see a picture of amoeba. Maybe. That's amoeba. It moves. <laughs> it moves. And it has pseudopods, and it can cause some diseases. That's amoeba. And then there's also, oh, this is um, paramecium. It moves and eats and really some weights. Not a whole lot going on, but they're, I'm sure they're cool organisms to some other people. And they have cilia around its cell to allow them to move around. So those are little tiny hair all around the cell. Moving on, here's the classification of protists. It's a working process. As you can see, um, how we read one of these cladograms is you look at this, this entire diagram and you find out what the timeline is first. So what you do is that you'll find the root. At this kind of, it's like a family tree. So you find the root and you find the, the tip of the trees. Um, the tree, and then you draw a line. So you can draw an arrow upward, going from past to recent. Okay, so anything that happened right here, these are past compared to recent. You can draw a timeline just like the x-axis, y-axis in math. So the first thing that you want to notice here is that we have a common ancestor right here. You see all the lines all come back to this one point. They all meet right here at this intersection, and this is the common ancestor for all of the prokaryotes. Did I just say that? I'm so sorry. Um, that's a common ancestor of all of these eukaryotes, all of these guys. Okay, and then you can identify other ancestor, ancestors or common ancestors, plants, and this um, is called ro Rhodophyta. <laughs> that's a protist. Those two have a common ancestor right here. If you compare this common ancestor with with this common ancestor, this common ancestor existed way before this common ancestor right here. Because if you imagine your timeline, right, uh, this part is a more ancient part compared to this part. Okay, uh, and you can see that animals are most closely related to this because they have a most recent common ancestor right here. That's the first time they meet. But if you think about this. Uh, this protist and this plant, they don't actually get to meet each other until right here. So when, when you do the meeting, you can only go down, okay? So if you don't understand how to read one of those, please consult with me. Actually, I'll be gone, but consult with me at some point. Um, how do protists move? They can use pseudopods, which is just a, when a cell moves, um, certain types of cells can extend a part of its cell membrane to a certain direction, the cytoplasm will also flow in that direction, and then it's kind of, it's kind of like you, you start extending this one, and then your entire body follows. Though that's pseudopod. You, ha you can have cilia or flagella. Cilia are a little tiny hair all around the cell. Flagella is one long tail at the end of one cell. They can also do passive movement, so if a protist is non-modal, um, they can depend on water or air in order to move around. Some ecological roles of protists, they can feed fish and whale, and um, a large part of the phytoplankton is made out of protists, and they do a ton of photosynthesis, um, not specifically for us, but it's good for us. 
And then they can also support coral reef. Um, they can also support coral reef. They have, uh, they produces energy to the coral by going through photosynthesis. They can provide shelter. For example, the kelp forest can provide shelter for many marine species. Very good, very good stuff. Um, they can also recycle waste, but they can also do symbiosis. It's, it's doing everything, these guys. Um, symbiosis. So these protists that you see right here can live in the guts of termites. Termites are not so good for us, but these guys, these protists live in the gut of termites and help termite digest wood, which produces energy for termites. And how now here's the bad part. There are protists such as um, a certain type of amoeba. I think that's amoeba. Anyway, there are certain protists that can cause diseases. And in this case, this protist right here, this plasmodium falciparum, I'm sure I'm reading it wrong, those cause malaria. Now we're moving on to fungi, fungi. What are fungi and what are their structures? Make sure you know that fungi are heterotrophs. They could be unicellular or multicellular. Um, there's no majority unicellular or multicellular. They could be both. But they're definitely all heterotrophs. They cannot make their own food. They have a cell wall, but uh, the cell wall is, has a different component compared to the bacteria or um, plants. Mushroom. First off, mushroom is a fungi, obviously. But mushroom is actually the fruiting body for, for that fungi. What a fruiting body is, is that it's, it's kind of a, a reproduction organ for fungi. And they produce spores. Spores are the reproductive cells for fungi. So mushroom is the fruiting body that produces spores in order to allow more mushrooms to, to, to be made. So, so here is a mushroom growing. It's not actually spreading the fruiting bodies. Oh, it's, it is a fruiting body. This is a fruiting body, but it's not actively spreading the spores yet. But if you look right here, we have this cool mushroom right here under the light. It's spreading um, spores all over the place. Oh my gosh. And, uh, and this is mushroom reproduction right in front of your eyes. So <laughs> fungi also have uh, some ecological roles, good and bad. Uh, they could be decomposers, they could be a parasite, so these, these are parasites right here. They could um, make up lichen, so lichen is a mutualistic relationship between multiple different organisms, and we're going to see it on the next page as well. And they could also live on the roots of some plants and allow um, the plants to better absorb nutrients. Ecological roles of fungi, again, here's lichen. Lichen is actually a three-part thing, it, it contains fungi and green algae, and cyanobacteria, which is a bacteria. And all together, they all live together and do their work together. Um, and the fungi, well, the green algae and the cyanobacteria can do the photosynthesis and supply fungi with the energy. And the fungi produce, provide um, water and mineral for the other organisms and protect the algae and cyanobacteria from, from sunlight. So you can see these guys. Um, in any kind of little forest. They're all over the place. You see those kind of dried up, you know, it could be whitish, greenish, yellowish. Those are different types of lichens. This is it. Have fun.